Hey there, tax bots. I'm Justin Spicer from Legal Aid of Southeast and Central Ohio. And I'm here with Melissa Skilleter and Megan Sullivan, attorneys with our low income taxpayer clinic. Today, we're going to be talking about IRS collection notices. Feel free to leave a comment or a question, and we will answer what we can. Melissa, let's start out with some basic information about IRS collections. I know there's been a lot of talk in the media recently about funding for the IRS and tax enforcement. If someone owes the IRS money, will an agent come and just take their stuff or take money from their bank account or paycheck? Or someone, or can somebody even be arrested for having tax debts? No, the IRS is not going to just show up and arrest you for owing money, especially when you can't afford to pay. They're also not going to show up and take your property or um, either at your home or work or your bank. There are steps that the IRS needs to follow to be able to take anything from you. You'll be given several opportunities to pay any tax or make a payment plan or other arrangements before they start the process to take anything. You will generally know in advance what the IRS is planning on doing. And I only say generally because if you don't open your mail or update your address with the post office or the IRS, you may not be able to, they may not be able to get these notices to you. So Megan, speaking of notices, I've heard that the IRS has been sending out a lot of collection notices lately. Should people be worried about that? People don't necessarily need to be worried. Nothing's changed. Um, from 2020 through 2023, when the IRS was having a hard time keeping up with mail and phone calls due to the pandemic, they stopped sending regular collection notices to people. Since the IRS is now better staffed, the procedures have returned to normal. So they recently sent a collection letter to many people who still had tax debts from previous years to remind them that they owe the IRS and that they may start to receive more collection notices from the IRS. Melissa, what was in those letters? The letter contains an update about the amount of the balances due for all tax years that you owe personal income tax. It also has some online resources with information about creating an IRS account, how to pay your tax debt, and what to do if you can't pay. So Megan, how does somebody end up in a position where they owe a balance to the IRS? There are several reasons why a taxpayer may have a balance due with the IRS. A common reason is that the taxpayer did not have enough money withheld from their paycheck during the year. Then when they go to file at the end of the year, they discover that they owe money. Also, people can owe the IRS because of an audit or because they failed to file their tax return on time. And again, if you owe taxes, the IRS will send you a bill. And if you don't pay the first bill, the IRS will send at least another additional bill um, before they start to take collection action. Melissa, if I have a balance due to the IRS and I can't pay it, what do I do? If you can't pay the balance you owe, the IRS has payment options available. The most important thing you can do once you learn that you owe the IRS is to act. Owing taxes can be very intimidating, but the worst thing you can do is to ignore the problem. If you disagree with the bill, call the number on the notice and explain why you disagree. If you owe them, if you agree that you owe the money, you can call the IRS and discuss a payment plan or other collection options. Megan, what collection options does the IRS have available? Depending on your income, you can qualify for three different options. First, you could qualify for currently not collectible status. Second, you may be able to get an offer and compromise. Or third, you may be able to set up a payment plan. Melissa, what's that first option Megan mentioned, the currently not collectible status? Currently not collectible status, or CNC, is when you and the IRS agree that you owe the tax, but because of your current financial situation, you can't afford to pay it. For this option, you need to show that you won't be able to afford to your basic living expenses, like your rent or mortgage payment, if you pay the tax as owed. If you, to see if you qualify for CNC, you can contact the IRS at 1-800-829-1040. That's 1-800-829-1040. Eight two nine ten forty. When you call, have documentation of your income and expenses, uh, monthly income and expenses available as you talk to the agent. Megan, the, se the second option you mentioned was an offer in compromise. How does that work? When you submit an offer in compromise or OIC to the IRS, you're asking them to settle the unpaid taxes for less than the full amount that you owe based on your ability to pay. Um, and that's what an offer looks at. It looks at the taxpayer's ability to pay over time. When determining that ability to pay, the IRS looks at the value of the taxpayer's assets, such as real estate, cars, bank accounts, and other property. In addition to property, the IRS also looks at your monthly income um, minus the certain amounts needed for basic living expenses, like Melissa just mentioned. And they also look at the income you're currently earning and the income you're likely to earn in the future, 
For this reason, the offer in compromise does not really work in situations where a taxpayer is just temporarily unemployed. The offer and compromise process does take a while to complete, and there are several forms that need to be submitted to the IRS. For more information, you can go to irs.gov slash OIC. Melissa, that third option is an installment agreement. Can you explain what that is? An installment agreement or payment plan is an agreement with the IRS that you will make smaller payments over time to pay the full balance. There are several types of installment agreements and some require a setup fee. If you have questions about the installment agreement, visit irs.gov slash OPA. Megan, if I have a balance due from 2017, can the IRS still collect? Yes, the IRS can collect for taxes for up to 10 years from the date they were assessed. And assessed means the day the IRS puts them on your account and starts collection, which may be several years after the actual due date of the return. There are also situations when that time can be suspended or paused, which give the, gives the IRS even more time to collect. What does it mean if I get a letter that says a federal tax lien was filed? A lien is a legal claim against your current property as well as your future property. When you don't pay the first bill for taxes due, a lien is created by law and attaches to all of your property, such as your home or car. In this case, a lien is not a piece of paper, but the right that the IRS has to your property if they want to exercise it. If the lien reaches a certain dollar amount, generally that's going to be $10,000 or more, a notice of federal tax lien may be filed with the county recorder's office in the county where you live. The notice of federal tax lien is a piece of paper that gives public notice to creditors that the IRS has a lien on your property. A public notice is something that's available for anyone to view. So Megan, what's, a di what's the difference between a tax lien and a tax levy? Um, well, a federal tax lien is a legal claim against your property. Um, a levy is a seizure that actually takes your property like your house, your car, your income, money in your bank account, retirement account, or social security payments to pay back your tax debt. There's a process that the IRS has to go through though to be able to actually take your property and you will generally be given notice before it happens. Um, again, we say generally because um, if you don't open your mail or update your address with the post office of the IRS, um, they may not get the notices to you or you um, might not know what they say. So Melissa, what safeguards are in place to protect taxpayers if they get a notice of federal tax lien or a notice of levy? Once a taxpayer gets a notice of federal tax lien or a notice of levy, they can request what's called a collection due process hearing or CDP hearing with the IRS appeals office. The taxpayer will need to request a CDP hearing no later than 30 days after receiving the notice. A CDP hearing is an opportunity to discuss options other than lien or levy that lets a taxpayer dispute the amount and lets the taxpayer dispute the amount they owe if they haven't already had a chance to do so. If you miss that 30-day deadline, you can still request an equivalent hearing within a year of the notice. The only difference between the two is that if you disagree with the outcome of your CDP hearing, CDP hearing, you can appeal the decision to the U.S. Tax Court. That option is not available with an equivalent hearing. So Megan, if people have more questions about the IRS collection process, where can they find that? Um, if taxpayers still have questions, they can review IRS Publication 594, which, which will explain the collection process and options that they have. To find um, that publication, you can go to irs.gov slash pub594, pub94, or sorry, pub594. Thank you, uh, Megan. Um, and thanks everyone for listening. That's all for now. The video of this session and the others in our tax chat series, including claiming tax credits when you don't need to file, are available on our Facebook page. We'll see you next time, TaxBots.